All right, guys, welcome to lecture number five uh, in our series here. We are going to be talking about object classes now uh, in R. We're still kind of going through our basics, laying the groundwork, so to speak, for uh, your foray into bioinformatics. Uh, so uh, object classes are uh, kind of what defines a variable. So you know we have these variables, but you can store them as different things, like numbers, characters, uh, things of that nature. Um, so we'll kind of discuss what those are. Um, you really need to know what they are if you're using packages, uh, because they'll call for specific object classes. Uh, so let's dive on in. OK, so uh, I'd like to point out uh, that up at the top here, uh, producer Isaac was not producing and the lectures and stuff were incorrect on the top here. Uh, so we have those up to date now. So this is lecture five object classes. All right, so let's get into it. Uh, first thing we're gonna do, annotator code. Object classes is what we'll be working on. Um, so hopefully you have stuff saved from before. Uh, if not, you might want to rerun some of this code if it's not in your global environment. If you uh, if you hit the sweep button, it erases it. Uh, I'm not saying to do that right now. Um, so we're going to print Gene, and we're going to run that real quick. Uh, so right, we have our uh, Gene that we call from this environment over here. We're going to print HSPs. Right, and so this was our data frame here for HSPs. And so uh, what we can also do is we can call class. And so this will tell us what our uh, specific variables are saved as. So let's call class from HSPs, which remember is this data frame down here. Um, and we have to do a dollar sign because we only want to select one column from this. And we'll do gene. So if we run class, of that HSP's data frame, the gene column, we see that it's a character. And this makes sense, right? So if we we'll go again and just, uh, if we just call, oops, now we want to do uh, HSP's dollar sign gene. Oh, I'm clicking all over here. All right. We see that there characters, right? They're not numerical var variables. They're, even though they have numbers in them like this, R treats these as characters, not as numbers. So if we do class HSPs, we do the nucleotides and run that, we see that it's numeric. So R thinks that this, which I'm going to just quick copy this and we'll print this. See, these are numbers, is what it's saying, right? So you can add these together in R will understand. So if we added you know, this column and this column, we'd get 4,917, right? Um, but if we were to add HSPA 1A and HSPA 1B, there would be no mathematical operation for them because they're characters. Um, so let's just finish it out here um, and do the amino acids and but you can guess what we'll get <coughs> excuse me uh, numeric right because if we print out um, the amino acids column again this was something that we entered as numbers right 840 640 uh, 654 etc so um, let's do some simple um, messing around with these a little bit, right? So if we have x as our variable and we say 15 plus 30, and we run this code, and then we just call x, you see that we get 53, right? So now if we do class, it stored it as numeric. 
And that makes sense. Intuitive VR is going to look at you entering numbers and say, okay, um, we'll classify these as numeric values because that's what you're mostly going to use. Them. But we can also kind of mess with that, right? So we have as character. So that's a function that says force whatever I put in this function to be a character, even if we put these numbers in there. So I'm going to do this list or collection of six var uh, variables, but store them as a character instead of a numerical value. So now if I call Z, we see that we have one, two, three, four, five, six. And if we were to call the class of Z, it's going to tell me, uh, oops, I accidentally put a capital there. It's going to say that they're characters, right? Even though they're numbers, they're stored as characters. And you can, one of the giveaways is that if you look at these numeric things on the printout, the numeric variables on the printout, there's no quotation marks, but anything that has a quotation mark is a character, right? So even up here, you see that they have quotation marks. Um, so that's kind of a way, uh, a red flag if you're printout, uh, if you're not understanding why something isn't working as it should. It might be that it's a character instead of a numeric uh, variable. So let's play around with this a little more. So uh, let's make Y now. So we're going to do Y is a character as well. And we're going to make this a collection. And it's going to be uh, numbers as well. 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4. So we have uh, six more numbers. Uh, that are different. So traditionally, if we would add these, you would just get the output, right? Uh, or it would add 1 to 9, 2 to 8, etc. So if we do y plus z, oops, I forgot to run this. Let's run this quick. And then hit this. Uh, so it says non numeric argument to a binary operator. So what it's saying is, it can't add those two because how are you going to add characters? Like there's no math function to it, right? So it's like, how would you add words, two lists of words to each other? It doesn't make sense to a computer language. Um, so let's play around a little more. So let's do Z2. And what Z2 is going to be is just Z, but we're not going to tell it that it is character um, and then we'll do let's do y2 and similarly it's just going to be the same stuff that we put into y1 but without the function to call it as a character so let's run these two lines did I run them oh yep there we go okay and now if we do z2 plus y2 and we run that to be capitalized because I capitalized it above. Now we run that. You see that it adds 1 to 9, 2 to 8, 3 to 7, 4 to 6, 5 to 5, 6 to 4. So the result is a list of the results or of the additions. So we get 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10 all the way across, right? So now let's look at class of Z2. Makes sense, right? That's numeric. Um, let's also call a class of HSPs, right? So remember, this is our data frame that we started with at the top. So if we run class on a data frame, it'll tell us that it's a data frame. So it's not a uh, list, it's not a uh, numerical uh, vector, it's not a character vector, uh, etc. Um, so one more thing. Um, so I showed you that you can do uh, as character. So Y, so if you do class of Y, you see we get the character. We can convert this back to a number actually, right? So what we can do is Y is as numeric Y. So what we're saying is take Y, 
make it numeric, and then just save it as Y again. You could save it as Y3 or something, but if you just wanted to convert them to numeric uh, because you made an error or something, you can run that. Now when we say, uh, let's take this, we'll just say class of Y again, and now it's numeric because we've called it uh, as numeric. So that is what I got for you uh, for object classes. Really, we focused uh, on uh, characters and numeric. Um, you can also have like Boolean, yes, no type things. Um, but you can also call class on your uh, global environment, see if it's a data frame, see if it's a list, see if it's a matrix, see if it's an array, uh, etc. And so um, this is important to be able to uh, use this class thing. If you get an error message that says, you know, object class is incorrect, um, that likely means that even if you have a list of numbers, whatever function or module or package that you're using to do an analysis is not expecting numbers in that column. So what you'll have to do is, like I shared with that last example, convert them to numeric, or if it's numeric and they need to be characters, convert them that way. Um, so messing around with object classes, um, can help you in the long run if a package uh, that you're using um, is very strict on, on what your inputs are. Uh, so that's what I got for you today for object classes. I hope you like the video uh, and I will see you in the next one.